As I stand here, I stand solely as your Lord. Speak to us. Grant us understanding. And let your name be glorified. Because we've prayed with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, brethren. It's indeed a wonderful privilege to be before you this morning. I was supposed to have preached in January. For some reason, I couldn't. And it had to be today. But I know that God has his reasons for why it is today. And before I go forward, I'd like to introduce my family. I know a lot of us, I sit here, you see me. Some people wonder if he's even married. So, thank God my entire family is here this morning. My wife and our children are here. I'm married to the most amazing woman, Mrs. Jill Yuado to Agudie. There's Mercy Kashimana, William Toungwa. Come on, guys, let's see you. There's Andrew Tekuma and Michael Kati. So, this morning, God wants to speak to us. In this season of remembrance of Christ's sacrifice and the salvation that he bought for us on the cross of Calvary. It's only apt that we meditate on the finality of what he did for us. The once and for all finished work which Christ did on the cross of Calvary to secure our salvation. All over Christendom today, it's Palm Sunday. And a lot of, we're all remembering Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem and the beginning of his journey to Calvary. But what did Christ do for us at Calvary? Yes, he bought our salvation with his suffering and his death on the cross. But today we are looking at the fact that we are sealed. We are sealed. Kindly turn to, with me to John chapter 3 verse 5 to 8. Let's begin. That will be the main text for our engagement this morning. John chapter 3 verse 5 to 8. Are we there? Okay. Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. This text portion we've read is taken from the text where Jesus Christ tells us in his own words about God's plan of salvation for our lives. It is in this same John chapter 3 that Jesus Christ goes on to tell us about God's love and how he sent his son. And here, it's actually him talking to Nicodemus, who came to him by night to inquire, how does one receive salvation? So what is God's seal? What is God's seal? Because we're talking about seal this morning. And this text clearly tells us that unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He tells us that what is flesh is flesh and what is spirit is spirit. So in essence, God is telling us that God himself is a spirit. And so for us to be sealed as children of God, we have to be born in the spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22 tells us that who also has sealed us and given us the spirit 
in our hearts as a guarantee. The Holy Spirit is therefore God's seal on our hearts. This is where we'll begin our study this morning. Knowing that the Holy Spirit of God is his seal on our hearts. Now, we may ask, so seal, how are we sealed? How are we sealed? We've already taken that portion from John chapter 3, verse 5 to 8. And so, um, we're going to be looking at a lot of scripture this morning because this is a topic that for some is even a bit controversial because some people, when you begin to talk of the Holy Spirit, you know, there are a lot of questions that arise. So, we're going to be making a lot of references to the to the scripture, to the Bible. So Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. In him you also trusted. After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We therefore receive the Holy Spirit by simply receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. That's what John chapter 3 verse 16 tells us. That for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's as simple as that. You believe it with your heart, you confess it with your mouth, and you are a child of God. You've received the Holy Spirit. Now for some, there's this, they make reference to this story in, um, I believe it's the Acts of the Apostles, where there were some disciples that had been baptized. Some, some, apost some followers of Jesus Christ had been baptized. And, you know, when they asked them whether they had heard of the Holy Spirit, they said they had not so much as heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So it, it, it begs the question, so if these people had been baptized, how come they didn't know of the Holy Spirit? But in our text so far, we say that once you believe with your heart, you confess with your mouth, then you have been born again and you receive the Holy Spirit. Now, it's stated clearly there. It's stated clearly in the Bible that these people were baptized into the baptism of John. Into the baptism of John. And the baptism of John was the baptism that was preparing people for the coming of Jesus Christ. But as we're talking through Easter today, we're talking about the sacrifice Jesus Christ has made and all that he has bought for us. So I just want us to rest that controversy. There is nothing that happens separately. Separately. After you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You receive Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. You take ownership of what he has done for you on the cross of Calvary. And God seals you with his Holy Spirit. So the bottom line is, you believe in what Jesus Christ has done. You accept it and you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, why are we sealed? Why are we sealed? I mean, yes, so Jesus Christ died. He shed his blood on the cross. He suffered and everything else. So, why are we sealed? The Bible tells us that we're sealed as a guarantee that God will fulfill all that Christ bought for us on the cross of Calvary. The seal of the Holy Spirit is a guarantee 
that God will fulfill all that Christ bought for us on the cross of Calvary. Now, we can go through so much. We can say, okay, he wore the crown of thorns that we will have no worries. He, he was broken in his body that ours will be whole. He shed his blood that we will be cleansed of our sins. So, God gave us the Holy Spirit so that we will know as a guarantee that all these things that Christ did on the cross of Calvary will come to pass. There are his promises in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And this is the book of a promise that is sealed. This is the covenant that was sealed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is why for those of us who took communion, if we remember the words of the communion service, this is exactly what it tells us. It tells us that this new covenant was sealed in the blood. And so let us look at um, Galatians chapter 3 verse 14. Galatians chapter 3 verse 14, it says, He redeemed us in order that the blessings promised to Abraham would come to the Gentiles in Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So first of all, God seals us with that Holy Spirit of promise. So that we, who are not originally Jews, can step into the covenant that God has with his people. So the promises God made to Abraham and his descendants become alive for us as Christians all over the world today because of that seal of the Holy Spirit. Because it is that seal of the Holy Spirit that now makes sure that you are no longer born of the Adamic nature, but you have now become one with Christ. You have now become an adopted child of God. And so for those of us who are Africans, who are all over the world, we can say that what Jesus Christ did that we're celebrating now at Easter is real for us, is true for us. We can own it, we can claim it. We can say these promises are ours because of that seal of the Holy Spirit on our lives. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. I told us we'll be looking at a lot of scripture this morning. And God has prepared us for this very purpose and has given us the Spirit as a pledge of what is to come. This is why God has sealed us. Given us this Holy Spirit as a pledge of what is to come. What is to come? Those are the promises that are held in this book. Those are the promises that God has said will come to pass in our lives. Those are the things that we look for and we hope for. And we have faith in and we trust that will come to pass in our lives as Christians. And these are the promises from now up unto eternity that God has promised in his word. And the gospel tells us that the seal of the Holy Spirit on our lives is a guarantee that these promises will come to pass. So when you pick up the Bible and you read and you see the promises from Genesis to Revelation and you see all those things that God has said are the benefits that come to his children. You can confidently, safely, Say, these are for you because God has given you the Holy Spirit 
of the promise. Now I want us as we speak, as we look at all these things and meditate on them, let us not forget that as you sit here, have you believed in your heart? Have you confessed with your mouth that what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary, he did for you? And if he did for you, then as we go on and you listen to what we are saying, you can begin to celebrate in your heart that these things are true for you, that these things that we are saying are indeed sealed on your behalf. Let us look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 14. I want the whole purpose of the scripture is to establish beyond reproach because we agree that the Bible is the truth. And so to establish beyond reproach that we are sealed, why we are sealed. Who, now who here being the Holy Spirit? Who is the pledge of our inheritance? until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Now, this verse, let me take it again. The Holy Spirit, who is the pledge of our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. We are sealed. We're talking about why we are sealed. We are sealed because God says, promises the inheritance. And he promises this inheritance, not just now. He promises that we are now his own possession up until eternity. So, there are those of us who some think that when you receive Jesus Christ, you receive the seal of the Holy Spirit, then somewhere along the line, you can lose God or God can lose you. But this verse is telling us, Ephesians 1 verse 14, that as you sit here today, you can sit in the full confidence that God has got you. God Almighty has got you. This world as it is, you know, there's this, it's, it's like a wilderness. And there's a song that says, he knows the way through the wilderness. We agree that we are sojourners and we are on a journey and we're heading to our eternal home. But the fact is, you and I do not know the way except through Jesus Christ. And we take Jesus Christ and the salvation and that way by faith. We take God as his word. And we trust that that word is true. And this morning God is telling us. That that word that you trust will take you from today into eternity. It is an assurance. You can rest in it. You can trust God. That even if you wake up today and you are no longer among the living. Because he has sealed you. You know exactly where you will end up. So, why are we sealed is what we're talking about. And we are not sealed just unto a day that is coming. We're not sealed just unto, oh, one day we will enter heaven. You know, we've said that we are sealed. All of God's promises... All of God's promises in his word are the reason he has sealed us. And Romans 8 verse 9 confirms that for us. Romans 8 verse 9 says, You, however, are controlled 
not by the flesh, but by the spirit. If the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone, if the, that you are controlled if the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of, God, of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. So, I'm just buttressing what I said earlier. But you know that you have the spirit. You and I know that seated here, we have the spirit of God. Today is a service of assurance. That's why it's called sealed. We're looking at the fact that everything that we believe, that we confess, has been sealed. So, as the verse says, we know that we belong to Jesus Christ. Now, brethren, we are looking at what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. We are looking at all that he has bought for us. We are looking at the promises that God has made. And we are looking at the assurance that God is giving us everything that has been promised to us. Everything. Because he has said that his word, not one jot, will fall to the ground. That all, he watches over his word to see that it is fulfilled. Now, we have this Holy Spirit that is in our lives. And we have this seal that is upon us to ensure that everything that God has said comes to pass. And so, this is a knowledge we can rest in. But the question now is, if you've been sealed, the blood has been shed, you have been sealed by God's Holy Spirit, Is this something that you believe, that you truly believe, that you are confident in, that you hold on to, that you say, yes, God's Holy Spirit resides in me? You know, it, it can be very funny sometimes when we talk about being led by the Holy Spirit. It can you know, a lot of the times when we're talking about being led by the Holy Spirit, people want to see a lot of razzmatazz, a lot of, you know, very big, wonderful things, raising from the dead kind of things happening. But when we allow the Holy Spirit to walk in our lives, it can be in the smallest of things. Some things that can even be very mundane in our own estimation. But God says he wants to be involved in every aspect of our lives. So, today he's telling us, I'll come to a story to illustrate that. But the Holy Spirit is God's seal on his people. This we've established. His claim on us as his very own. And there's something I found out while preparing for this study. It says the Greek word translated earnest in some of the passages that refer to God's Holy Spirit being a seal on our lives is arabon, which means a pledge. And that's what we've been saying. That is part of the purchase money or property given in advance as security for the rest. So the Holy Spirit is like a down payment. It's like an advance. It's like a pledge that God is going to do all that he said he would do. So the Holy Spirit is given to us as a first installment, in quote, to assure us that our full inheritance as children of God will be delivered. 
So it's like um, when, when you buy something from a shop and it's going to be delivered to your house, for instance, and you take the receipt and you're waiting for the delivery vehicle to bring it. The Holy Spirit is that receipt that you hold in your hand as an assurance that God is going to deliver all that he has promised. The Holy Spirit is given to us to confirm to us that we belong to God. Who grants us his spirit as a gift. Just as grace and faith are gifts. Though the gift of the spirit, through the gift of the spirit, God renews and sanctifies us. Sanctifies us, meaning he renews us and sets us apart as his own. He produces in our hearts those feelings, hopes, and desires which are evidence that we are accepted by God. That we are regarded as his adopted children. That our hope is genuine. And that our redemption and salvation are sure in the same way that a seal guarantees a will or an agreement. So God grants us his Holy Spirit as the certain pledge that we are his forever, as we said earlier. We are his forever and shall be saved in the last day. The proof of the Spirit's presence is his operation on the heart which produces repentance. So, we want to know, are we sealed? Are we truly sealed? Have we truly received the Holy Spirit? We know that the proof is repentance. The fruit of the Spirit are the proof that God's Holy Spirit resides in us. And we can see that in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. As conformity to God's commands and will, a passion for prayer and praise and the love of God's people. These things are the evidence that the Holy Spirit has renewed the heart and that the Christian is sealed for the day of redemption. The gift of the Spirit to believers, as we said earlier, is a down payment on our heavenly inheritance, which Christ has promised us and secured for us at the cross. It is because the Spirit has sealed us that we are assured of our salvation. And the most beautiful part of it is that we know that no one can break the seal of God. So, this is why we are sealed. This is why we are sealed. As an assurance, as a down payment, so that we know for certain that be it today, be it tomorrow, in our everyday lives, in everything that we do, God's promises are sure in our lives. And so I said, I was going to tell you a story. Yesterday, when I was preparing to come stand before us this morning, I had a full day. I had to go and pick Andrew from school and so many other things. So I, I didn't have the opportunity to write my notes at all. The coordinator will tell you I sent him the verses after 10 p.m. So I had typed the notes out on my laptop but my printer was not working. It was 8 to 9 p.m. I didn't know where a business center would be open at that time. So I got in the car with my wife and we drove out. But before we drove out, she had Googled and seen that there was a business center that would possibly be open at the time. 
But just before we could leave the house, her phone ran out of power because we had been out all day. And so we got in the car, we, we drove out. And I said, okay, God will guide us to where we will print this. I'm, I'm telling us something that seems very ordinary. So we drove out of the house and she said, where is a busy part of town? And I said, okay, let's go towards H Medics around for you. It's busy. There will probably be a business center there. But as we drove, we got to Uze Market. We were coming from Bega. We got to Uze Market. And God just said, turn here. And so we turned. And both of us were like, ah, why are we even turning here? We know for certain that is the next turn. But we turned there. And we drove down straight. And then when we got there, the logical thing to do, to go to where we wanted to go, was to go right. And then I turned left. And we drove straight down, heading back towards Barnex. And I was telling her that, but by this time, Barnex is closed. Forget all the activity you see there during the day. By this time, nothing is happening around there. And then we drove, and we got to just before the junction that will take you over into Barnex. And then I saw First 40 Hotel. And then I remembered that there was a business center at First 40 Hotel. And I turned in just in the hope that it will still be open. And lo and behold, it was open and they were sitting there doing nothing. And so we went in and we printed these notes out at somewhere around after 9 p.m. to 10, when nobody would expect a business center to be open. I'm just saying this so that we see how some of the most ordinary thing, the most simple thing, God wants to be a part of it. And if you let him be a part of it, you would go and find the business center open People sitting there doing nothing, just waiting for you to come and print your notes. So, God has sealed us. And he has sealed us through believing in Jesus Christ. And he has sealed us as an assurance that his promises in our lives will come to pass. But now that we are sealed, what? So we are sealed. We have these assurances. We know we are sealed. Then what? Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. 2 Timothy 2 verse 19. He tells us that, Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal and what is the seal we know it's the Holy Spirit but the seal the Lord knows those who are his and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity but the most congen part for us is that the Lord knows those who are his so because you are sealed by the Holy Spirit, God knows you. God knows you. That is why he can say, I know the number of hairs on your head. Or not on your head as in my case. But <laughs> God can say he knows you. And when he says the number of hairs on your head, it means he knows you in detail. He knows everything that affects you. You are his child. He knows you. And you can rest in that knowledge that God knows you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 14. The natural man 
does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. So first, God knows you. But look at this beautiful part this verse is telling us. You know God. Because you are sealed, you know God. You can discern the things of God. You can understand the things of the Spirit of God. Because you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. So yes, God knows you. But the seal also confirms that you know God. The Bible tells us elsewhere that only that spirit of God knows the mind of God. But we have that spirit. It is in us. And so we can know God. God can actually speak to you. You can discern the mind of God. You can know what God wants for your life. You can know which way to go. That is why the Bible tells us that there will be a voice beside, behind you which tells you to turn this way or that. You know which way to go. As simple as the example I gave earlier. In actual fact, knowing whether to turn left or right. Because you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, a lot of the time, when we talk of God's Holy Spirit, discernment and all this, you know, we, we, we shy away from it. When we say God spoke to me, a lot of the time, we shy away from it. But God's word is telling us this morning that because God knows you and has put his seal of the Holy Spirit on you, he has given you his spirit, his spirit which knows his mind. And so you can know the mind of God. God can actually speak to you. God can give you a knowing of what to do and how to do it. Because you have that seal on your life. Now, we're talking about we are sealed. What now that we are sealed? And first, God knows you. Second, you know God. And 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 tells us something else that is very interesting. It's a question really. Do you not know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? I want us to take time to take that in. God's spirit dwells in you. Now, when we go through scripture and we read, Jesus Christ could not do any of what he did until God's spirit was actually announced on him. The disciples went and hid in the upper room. They were actually hiding until God's spirit came upon them. And the world is changed forever because of that one act. The same people who were cowering in the upper room came out 
speaking in all languages and converted 3,000 people in one day. And we read of the exploits up until Paul and all that happened and all the stories to the extent that even ordinary handkerchiefs from people's bodies were able to heal people. We've read in this word that we confirm is true that Jesus Christ himself said you will do much more. I will do much more than he ever did. And the book of Ephesians tells us that with the fullness of God in us, God will be able through us to do much more than we could ever ask or imagine. Because we have this seal of the Holy Spirit on our lives. So, if you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, that same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead. I like the, 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 the movie Reason. Because when they came to inspect the Roman seal on the grave, they actually said these ropes do not look like they were cut. They look like they and it gives you the idea that when God's power came there it was an explosion of power you are the temple of the Holy Spirit that same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is resident inside you and up until now we have been establishing that this is the truth now Romans chapter 8 verse 16 Romans 8 verse 16 we're rounding up now is the part my personal favorite part it says the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. That seal that God has put on us through his Holy Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. You sit down and you know that God is your father. And whenever I think of that, I think of myself and my children. And I think of the fact that as I'm standing here speaking to you, especially this small one, he can walk up here and collect this microphone if it crosses his mind. I know that yesterday after I went to one end of town to print these notes just because just because I drove to another end of town with my wife to go and buy so you had to come and give them in the house that they didn't ask for it, it, it might sound like something little but that is how God feels towards us it's not like you have to ask and beg he is our father. He gives us an example in how he created the world. He did not create man and say, come, let's start uh, tilling this garden. He made sure that he created everything that man needed. Man was the last thing. Everything else, he spoke it into existence. And then when he came to man, he lovingly, you can imagine God kneeling down, lovingly forming man with his hands. And when he finished, 
he breathed his own spirit into man and made man a living being. You can imagine that. Just imagine that picture. God Almighty. The same way when we fell, he came down to earth himself to take the punishment upon himself so that today you and I can sit here and talk about the fact that we are sealed to his promises. So, we're talking about now that we are sealed. Philippians 1 verse 6. And this is where we close. And this is where we close. Being confident of this very thing. That he who has begun a good work in you. Will complete it. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Being confident of this very thing. That seal gives us confidence. That God who has brought you here this morning to sit here and listen to his word, who is assuring you that he has sealed you with his Holy Spirit, who began that good work, will complete it. God will complete the good work that he began. And it says we'll complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So, several, when we say complete it, people think that, oh, one day we will now receive. He says he will complete it until. So, every day you wake up, God is completing his good work in your life until the day of Jesus Christ. The promises are coming to pass. The things you have asked for and believed for are coming to pass. The words you have spoken out are coming to pass. God's assurances on your life are coming to pass. Every day. Because he has said in his word that he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So today... God is telling us that it is sealed. When Jesus Christ said on the cross that it is finished, God has sealed it. It is done. It is finished. It is a completed work. And we can rest in that knowledge. May God help us to understand his word to us this morning. To be able to rest in the assurance that everything concerning us from today to eternity has been sealed by his own spirit. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We give you praise, honor, and adoration because you have sealed everything that concerns us. You have perfected all that you have promised us. And we can rest in this sure knowledge that today and even on to eternity, we are yours and we can enjoy the privilege and the inheritance of your kingdom. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We ask, Lord, that you will engrave it on our hearts, cause that it will be something we hold in remembrance in our everyday walk to the glory of your name. Thank you, Father, because you've answered us in Jesus' name. Amen.